As we continue with our Outlook series, I'll be speaking with Jim Wyckoff today for Technically Speaking. We're gonna take a look at what exactly happened with the tapering from the Fed yesterday. Stay tuned. And joining me now is Jim Wyckoff. Jim, thanks for joining me today. Hello, Alex, always nice to be with you. So a bit of a surprise yesterday, depending on who you speak to with the Fed uh, starting to taper a little bit. Markets didn't really know how to react from, uh, from what I saw. I mean, it was up, down, then it dropped steeply. Uh, Jim, what happened yesterday? Alex, uh, we saw high price volatility in the gold market in the immediate aftermath of the Fed tapering announcement Wednesday afternoon. What happened is the initial fluctuations on both sides of unchanged was, you know, positioning by near-term traders. But then you saw the gold market rallying post uh, modest to moderate gains in the in the several minutes following the uh, tapering announcement. But you also saw the stock market uh, see early selling pre- or selling pressure in the immediate aftermath of the FOMC. But then made a 180, did a reverse. Uh, move and traded sharply higher. When that stock market, the U.S. stock index has made those moves uh, sharply higher, that put downside price pressure on the gold market and you saw prices drop well below unchanged and we've seen follow through selling pressure continue on Thursday. Uh, what that means is the, uh, the, the money flow, uh, very important concept in trading. The money flow started to go into the stock market that uh, hurt other asset classes, including gold, and that's why you saw gold sell off Wednesday afternoon, and you're seeing continued selling pressure uh, Thursday morning. All right, Jim. Uh, before this interview, we were speaking briefly about uh, the bull market and U.S. stocks being over. Uh, can you expand on that a little bit, and how would that work with gold? What would that do to gold prices? Alex, uh, the past several months or longer, we have seen uh, the U.S. stock indexes as well as other world stock indexes uh, uh, hit new record or multi-year highs. Uh, There's no doubt that these uh, bull runs in the stock indexes are very mature. Uh, It's very likely that the vast amount of energy has been expended by the bulls on this upside push. It's my bias that... uh, these uh, the bull market runs and the stock indexes are, are short lived. Uh, there's not not much uh, time left before we uh, top out, and history shows that to be the case. I don't know exactly when it's going to be. I just know that it's going to occur, probably at some point. Uh, my my guess would be in the first quarter of 2014, if if uh, not very early in the first quarter. Uh, another factor that augurs for a bull market runs being close to an end. It's just the fact that so many traders and investors have gotten so bullish lately, including more so on Wednesday. That just pushes uh, even more people to one end of the boat, and uh, it's going to tip fairly soon, I think. When you see that reversal occur in the stock market, when you start to see funds coming out of the stock market, you're going to see other asset classes uh, benefit, including precious metals and gold. Now, we have a couple of weeks coming up. Obviously, it's the holiday season. Markets are not going to be in full swing. Traders are most likely going to be off the desks, leaving maybe second in command, uh, taking over trades. What kind of volumes, what do you expect uh, coming from these two weeks, uh, if anything? Is there any activity we should look to, or is it just going to be a nice quiet time uh, during the holiday season? Alex, I think that you will indeed see lighter trading volumes, which means quieter activity. However, the technicals uh, for gold and silver remain fully bearish. That means the path of least resistance for prices is going to continue to be sideways to lower until we see some early bullish technical clues to suggest otherwise, and we haven't seen those yet. So uh, holiday period is probably going to be quiet, but with a sideways to downside price bias for both gold and silver. All right, Jim, let's get into your Wyckoff market ratings for gold and silver. Alex, uh, Wyckoff's market rating for both gold and silver is one, uh, fully bearish for both uh, markets and gotten more bearish this week with uh, the late week sell-off. For February COMEX gold, we've got overhead resistance at this week's high of 1251 and change, solid technical support at the 2013 low of 1189 and change. Uh, not far away from that level. If we drop through that 1189 level, 
you open up a swift downside price potential to 1100 or even below. So the, the market is very precarious uh, right now. Silver market sees overhead technical resistance at the $20 level, solid technical support around 1860. All right, Jim, well, if I don't see you uh, before uh, Christmas and the new year, happy holidays and all the best. Happy holidays to you, Alex, and I want to wish all my Kitco readers and listeners a happy holiday also. And thank you for watching this edition of Technically Speaking with Jim Wyckoff. Make sure you keep checking out our Outlook series that is updated every day on our website. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to send them to newsfeedback at kitco.com, or you can find me on Twitter at Alex underscore Letourneau. Have a good one.